And so before we get started, first of all, a little bit of housekeeping from the Evolutionary Astrology Network. Some of you might be familiar that we have four different ways in which you can study astrology with us. First of all, you can listen to our free weekly audio podcast, The Star Lady and Media Monk. They're found on our website under the forecasting page. You can subscribe to our Astro Library where we have put 12 years of materials into three different sections or subject matters. You can purchase course materials and become a registered student. And you can pursue homework with us and become certified as an evolutionary astrologer. Little information on our Astro Library. Here are the three sections that I mentioned. You can subscribe to them for one month. For a monthly recurring to cancel at any time, you can subscribe six months and 12 months. You can do each section separately, or you can do all three sections from our Astro Library. Here's our course materials. We have three segments currently um, in EA, and we offer with each section um, tab ring binders, DVDs. Sections 1 and 2 come with an original JWFG transcript, access to 250 hours of archived audio files, webinar classes each month, and we are now putting the DVDs as streaming DVDs in the students' areas of the website for sec segments 1 and 2. And we also have started Facebook forums for students of segments 1 and 2. Now, as I said, segments 1 and 2 include free monthly webinar classes. If you'd like a free sample class download of what we actually teach, you're welcome to contact us at evolutionaryastrology.net and ask for a free sample class to download and watch just like you are these webinars. So here we are again with our material for tonight, Jupiter in Leo Part 1. We're going to jump right in and work through that archetype of Jupiter. From the perspective of evolutionary astrology, Jupiter represents that principle of growth and expansion, of moving forward, moving outward, becoming more than we were before. One of the things that falls under this principle of growth and expansion is the desire to understand our world, our universe. And so Jupiter, its rulership of Sag in the ninth house, all three of them as an archetype, is what EA calls natural laws and cosmological understandings of the universe. What is the metaphysical world behind the manifestation of the physical world? How is it all put together? What's it all mean? This is that part of all of us that ponder those big questions in our life. And so from an ability to put together our understandings of the cosmos, of the universe, we create what we will call spiritual and religious philosophies, um, broad understandings, abstract understandings of the universe. We can even condense that down into religion. Currently on the planet, there's about 3,500 different organized religions on the planet. So I um, show you this quote from Jeffrey Wolf Green, the creator of evolutionary astrology. The fundamental laws or principles of the universe are the same for all individuals and cultures, but they are conceived, conceptualized, and expressed in a diversity of cultural and individual ways. Again, even though natural spiritual laws and principles, timeless, universal, the same for all species, all forms of consciousness, we will interpret it in all kinds of different ways by societies, countries, and us as individuals in a human sense. Jupiter also relates to that archetype that we call the right brain. Again, 
the non-logical part of our brain, the intuition and sixth sense also come in here. This is where we tap in to larger principles and understandings of the universe and something pops into consciousness. We compare that to Mercury, Gemini and the third house where we try to make sense of that physical world and apply labels to everything in which we can say I'm sitting in a chair and my computer is on a desk. So Jupiter wants to see the broad picture. Mercury looks at the logical left brain analytical picture. And one of the things that Jupiter has to realize is when it comes to the deeper um, understandings and principles of the universe, one plus one can equal three. In other words, Jupiter's archetype is where we tap in to those natural laws and we are able to understand something that we can't necessarily explain. We'll work with this some more as Jupiter moves through Leo. One of the other things that comes through with this Jupiter archetype is also this concept of what we will call the teacher or the guru. Guru in the Eastern philosophy sense, in the Western philosophy sense, we will call it a pastor or a minister or perhaps even rabbi. And so Jupiter, because it is this concept to grow and expand, also relates to what we call the teacher and the student two sides of the same coin and many of us are students of astrology hoping to someday become a teacher of astrology that archetype of Jupiter Sag in the ninth house because of that principle of growth and expansion leads to the future Jupiter can be a very simple concept of the future because when you are moving, when you're growing, you're growing into your future. And so Jupiter transiting through the signs is always going to be bringing the leading edge of the future for all of us as individuals and collectively as different types of groups, societies, cultures, countries. Another archetype that falls under Jupiter is what we call honesty versus lies. And as we are discussing these archetypes, they can also fall with that polarity, Mercury, Gemini, and the third house. And so if we're not being honest, we're being less than honest. We can be unconsciously lying. We can be subconsciously or consciously lying. And when we start getting into honesty versus lies and we start talking about what we will call truth, relative to Jupiter there is what we know as individual truth. Something for us as an individual that we know as a personal truth for ourselves. It may not agree with someone else's personal truth. And through that Mercury Gemini third house polarity someone can expose something as being less than the absolute truth for us and when that bubble gets burst it has this expanding it has this questioning why and it leads us to thinking how I like to explain it is think of dropping the pebble in the water and watching those ripples expand and expand and expand until infinity and so we will always have the limitations of personal or individual truths exposed in order to expand us further into again the concept of what we will call universal truths, natural truths which are always timeless. They exist throughout space-time, they exist throughout all the different cultures, religions, countries on planet Earth. Now, because Jupiter is so right brain focused and it grasps a concept of something, when it has to then bring it through and speak it through words 
and language, when it has to communicate it, one of the things that can happen to Jupiter, again, that principle of growth and expansion, is that we can, it, it's, it's like the fisherman who caught a 12-inch fish and the next time he told the story it was a 15-inch fish. And six months later he had a 36-inch fish that he caught. So we have to watch sometimes with this principle of Jupiter. There's a concept that's called exaggeration. The story gets bigger and bigger, better and better. And when we recognize that within ourselves, we have to come back to being in integrity with our truth. And so that's why I will sometimes call this Jupiter archetype integrity versus exaggerations. Related to that in many ways is what we will call also authenticity versus compensation. Jeffrey Green used to say that one of the principles of Jupiter was psychological compensation. When we can't stand in our truth to the utmost degree we know it, we can fall into compensating on who we really are. And then we become less than authentic to our true self. And so reflect for a moment. Where do you compensate in relationships? Where do you compensate with work? Where do you compensate with your belief systems? Because you don't want to ruin the relationship with your neighbor next door who is a born-again evangelicalist. We all do it in small ways, large ways. And so Jupiter is always working to help us become more authentic with who we actually are versus playing our compensation game. When we are being less than real with ourselves, with others, when we are standing in less than the largest understanding of truth we know, one of the things that can sometimes happen for Jupiter is what we will call alienation. In other words, we feel like we are outside looking in. We can feel like we're a tribe of one, just like the archetype of Uranus, Aquarius, in the 11th house. Part of the alienation from the Jupiter-Sag side of the equation is to help us get again in touch with who we really are. So we not only talk our talk, we walk our talk. We are real with ourselves and we're real with others. And when we get alienated, when we get thrown in upon ourselves, this is also a time period in which we are searching for deeper levels of understanding our world, deeper understandings of the cosmos, deeper understandings of you know, spiritual philosophies and what it's what makes up this universe. As I mentioned a little earlier, this archetype also relates to what we call language and communication lessons. Jupiter has an interesting relationship again with Mercury, um, Gemini third house in that there from Jupiter's perspective, there's the concept of what it wants to speak about. And there has to be a relationship with that polarity Mercury in order to find the words in any language to really explain and communicate what we mean. And so we have the extremes from Jupiter and language being totally misunderstood. Can't find the words, can't get the brain to work, somebody else interprets it up but you know totally differently than what we thought we were saying and we can go to the opposite end of that spectrum and when we look at the teacher archetype the preacher archetype we can have the spellbinding speaker who always seems to be able to take something from that idea of a concept 
or a metaphysical, non-physical representation and bring it through the language of words and make it something that each of us can understand in its most simplified fashion. Truth is simple. It's we humans who complicate it with our words and our languages and our beliefs and our disagree disagreements over all of that. Another thing with the archetype of Jupiter is that, going back to the very first principle of growth and understanding, expansion, well, well also what can come with Jupiter is what we will call lessons of loss, something being removed. And what is happening there is the universe is creating space for the Jupiterian expansion, evolution, and growth. Think of your house and the mm, reality TV shows about hoarders. They can never throw away um, a bag from the grocery store. They can never get rid of old clothes. They can't throw out the new old newspapers. And things accumulate and accumulate and accumulate in that space of theirs, the house, till eventually it can't hold anything more. And when that happens, oh, I have a brother-in-law who knows somebody like that. We know this. I got, my extended family has someone like this. The house started on fire made a lot of space in the house at that point and so that's an analogy of what we're talking about with Jupiter is that sometimes something will be lost something will be removed or taken away so that it creates that void or space in which to grow and then of course with the archetype of Jupiter and that growth and expansion we also run into lessons of excess. Think of the person who cannot handle um, boundaries with alcohol. If one drink's good, surely six is better. If one cookie's good, surely the whole box is better. We can use any subject and most likely come up with all kinds of examples in which we can see that we can go to excess with something that we are wanting to move into, something we are wanting to experience. This is where Saturn, the principle of decay and death, comes in and has a unique planetary pair with Jupiter. Jupiter's growth, Saturn's decay. And together they hold that cycle or circle in balance. We can't keep going out into the universe forever. Sooner or later there is going to be a um, reflecting um, coming back in. You can think of it as the law of polarity. Energy moving outward from the center, active. Energy moving inward to the center, passive. And how the two are almost two halves of the coin. So when Jupiter is going to all its excess of expansion, it not only has Saturn to keep it in check, it has Chiron, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and all the rest of the outer objects in our solar system for Jupiter to run into some of the limits of its boundaries. Now with Jupiter in Cancer, we have had um, energy moving back to the center, passive. As Jupiter moves into Leo, it flips that polarity into energy moving outward again. And we can feel that energy between emotionally sensitive, watery cancer and, hey, let's go play, create, expand Leo. We'll get into that a little more as well. Before I move on to the Leo archetype and putting these together, it's if anything in, in if there's any key words with Jupiter that I've missed or not talked about, um, you're always willing to um, speak up, shoot Leroy a little question, he'll pass it on to me, all right? 
So I want to speak a little bit about that archetype of Leo as I take a drink. Thank you for bearing with me as I refresh myself with liquids. I neglected to say with Jupiter that if we relate it to Sag and the ninth house, what we are dealing with is active, mutable fire. The mutable means going all over the place. And that's where Jupiter sometimes needs again that boundary. When we start to look at the archetype of Leo, which is ruled by the sun, and the sun rules the fifth house as well as the sign of Leo, here we are dealing with the active polarity, the fixed modality, fixed being persevering, steady eddy, and fire again. From the perspective of EA, the element of fire is that spark of insight, that spark of energy, that creative spark of the universe. And when it comes to Leo, it is the principle of creative self-actualization, meaning being all we can possibly be in every area of our life on a conscious co-creating level with the universe. The opposite of that, distorting that, is what EA calls that starving artist syndrome. Well, I've got all this creativity. The fixed fire of Leo versus the cardinal fire of Aries. Aries just wants all freedom to go in all kinds of directions. It has the fire and the spark all right, but it needs to evolve into Leo before it gets a focus. With Leo, we know we, what we want to create. We know what our talents are. Why won't the world see us? Why doesn't the world want to purchase my you know, artistic efforts of whatever I happen to be doing? One of the reasons for this is the Aquarian polarity. We'll touch upon this in its retrograde. And that is the fact that we can create for the we cannot just create for the sake of our own fulfillment. We have got to actually provide and create something, things, stuff, principles, concepts, whatever, that actually can fulfill a need for any society or group. And so what starts to come into play here with this Leo archetype is Leo has to learn how to be a participant in the play of life versus that desire to be the director or play God, to be in charge, to be in control. It's fixed energy. It's fixed fire. I know what to do. I know what I want. If you just listen to me, we'll be just fine. And, and the opposite of Leo is that Aquarius polarity, which is what about everybody else? What about the group? So we have to learn to hear source energy as it speaks to us and wants to express creatively through us. Source energy is the director of the play. We are a creative expression of source energy. And that's one of the basic lessons of this Leo archetype. Now you hear in your traditional cookbook, astrology, books, etc. that Leo is love and Leo is lovers and Leo is love affairs. And what we'll start to, to bring in here when we look at this whole concept of lovers and giving, receiving love, it's all about inner versus outer love. So with the Leo archetype, you get love triangles. If we're not getting enough attention from the one we're with in a primary relationship, we can actually go seek attention outside that to raise a flag, to draw attention, to create some drama, to say, hey, notice me. Leo wants to be the center of the universe. Look at its ruler, the sun, center of our solar system. Where would we be without the life force of the sun? So that Leo archetype has such a strong life force. 
that it wants to be acknowledged for that. Again, polarity Aquarius, we have to acknowledge that this is true for everybody. Everybody wants to be able to be noticed, to be loved. More on the inner versus outer love, but first of all, Leo also works with this concept that we call children. We know coming from Cancer and its ruler Moon and the fourth house archetype that that is the nurturing parent, many times the female but not always. It is symbolic of motherhood in general and it's also symbolic of the child needing to be bonded to the nurturing parent. And if through Cancer or fourth house there is a nurturing bond with the parent, then we can move into that Leo creativity and really bring forth that special, unique, creative energy called us. Due to the distortions of natural law into overwhelming patriarchal principles these days, we don't have a tendency to have that natural, unconditional, supportive parent who bonds with us and who can then see us for who we are in a special and unique way. So what happens with this Leo archetype is it can be a signature uh, for the archetype of what we call emotional arrest, wounded as a child in some way on a spiritual, mental, emotional, or physical level. That's what I call SMEP, taking those initials, condensing it down. And when we are wounded that way, when our parents do not unconditionally love us, as all children expect, have a right to, then we take on that wound of not being understood or not being acknowledged. And that wound can be carried forward into adulthood. And then we unconsciously are always looking for the partner who's going to fulfill that unconscious, unfulfilled need to be unconditionally loved or noticed or understood that we did not receive from our parents. So Leo, fifth house, and their ruler son contain children as they're growing into their creativity, as they're growing into the hormones and the preteen years, not to mention the adults as lovers. But with children, it'll bring in that broad concept of lessons with our own biological children. It'll bring in stepkids, people we have past life karma with as a parent, or us as a child with them as a parent, broaden that out to karma kids and karma parents, both directions. And so in a broad sense with this Leo archetype, we're going to be dealing with past life karma individually and collectively as both parents and children. Oh, that immigration issue, anybody? Hmm, anybody seeing that in the news here? <laughs> So again, if there's anything I've missed with Leo as we go on, you're always welcome to bring it up. Ask me to uh, put it into the story that I am weaving here, and we'll do our best to include all these archetypes. So when we start to blend Jupiter into Leo, which by the way, July 16th, 2014 through August 11th, 2015, one of some of the key words that just popped into my head party play love and I think this is a shot from that Simba movie or the Lion King the Lion King and then there was a follow-up with Simba and I think this is Simba growing up um, with his own um, wife and kids so all the fire signs get put into that category again fire spark you know energy 
and party. And Leo, of course, the child, play. Leo, love. Jupiter and Leo, it's everybody wants to party again. Oh, gosh, I got past all those emotions of Jupiter and Cancer. Oh, sigh of relief. Oh, my gosh, can I just relax for a moment. I think I'd like to take some time off. I want a vacation. Can I vacation for a year? I just want to go party. I just want to go play. I just want to, you know, chill. Key concepts for Jupiter and Leo. Here's the extremes of that in the opposite direction. If we don't want to play, we fight. If we don't want to love, we hate. Individually and collectively. And because all fire signs have that spark of energy, and Jupiter especially can go to excess, we can see excesses of this. We can see those who, who just want to have a good time and not have any responsibilities. We can see those who can be so caught up into their fears and insecurities that they've got to tear down anyone else in order to have any sense of ego or security within themselves. So observe these two big broad concepts in your own world or in what you observe in your personal and collective worlds around you. And Jupiter and Leo less than a week, you can probably already see some of these things going on in your personal world. And again, look around us in the collective world. We've already seen the escalation of guns and wars and bombs within the last week. More on that a little later. So, with Jupiter and Leo, Everything, any subject goes to excess and extreme, both from a good or positive perspective and a bad or negative perspective. And we will, chances are, find the blend of all of that in our own lives, not to mention the lives of anybody around us that we observe. So Jupiter and Leo is expanding our ability to perceive the universal source, the returning forces in the universe, expanding our ability to perceive love. And where it starts is finding inner love. You know, Leo can wear this big mask. Leo can be so full of ego and the larger the ego the more insecurity under the surface the more that Jupiter and Leo reaches for an inner sense and understanding of loving self and finding love from the inside first the quieter they become and the more they just radiate unconditional universal love you know it reminds me of the guru the female guru Amma A-M-M-A -M -M -A. she's known as um, I think the hugging mother or, or the hugging guru or something like that just radiates out universal love recognizing that energy is stronger than any material good any possession any outer lover. Many of us aren't there yet. We have to start with that inner love first. And I heard my lover breathe. <laughs> Were you wanting to say something? Oh, maybe he muted, unmuted. Uh, I am muted. I heard you say ah, and if you're speaking, you cut yourself off. Uh, I was muted there, but um, yes, I can. Uh, mm. I can certainly yeah. perceive that finding inner love is the most important part of this process, Jupiter and Leo. Because mm -hmm. then yeah. you're then then when you do create, it's going to feel more congruent to you and the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. 
Yes. I mean, this is, again, this is one of the deepest lessons of Jupiter and Leo. Expanding our ability to perceive universal love coming from source energy and working to find it from within ourselves first. And then we find inner love reflected outside of us. Not only in intimate relationships, but in all kinds of ways. And yes, especially in intimate relationships. Leo squares Taurus and Scorpio. Taurus self-reliance and Scorpio merging with another on the deepest levels possible. Leo's halfway between that. And so we can either go for the Taurian self-reliance and the Scorpio deep merging. Or we can go for the possessiveness of Taurus and the codependency of Leo. So that's all going to be reflective of how much we are recognizing I love me. And one of the things to realize from the perspective of natural laws and principles, all you got to do is look around you. Nature is abundant. There is more than enough love to go around in the universe. And this same principle also applies to creativity. Jupiter and Leo is going to be about recovering our inner wounded child. Wherever we have been wounded as a child in this life and as child in past lives, those are going to be areas within us in which we are hypersensitive. We're on guard because it is a wound, because it is a trauma, because there is karma there, because we weren't loved, we weren't fulfilled. We're going to be extremely sensitive in that area. The most common example I could give you is if a child su suffered sexual abuse either by the parent or by a stranger or by an extended family member, you're going to have someone who is hypersensitive around anything that even smells like the slightest little bit of sexual energy. And so Jupiter is going to help us become conscious of this in Leo, of where each of us have carried our own inner wounds, now, with Jupiter and Cancer, those wounds as a child had a strong emotional flavor where we nurtured in our early environment. And we could have been nurtured by our parents quite well in our early environment, but as we grew up, as we became middle school, preteen, young adult, we could have experiences in life with or without our parents in which we were wounded in some way. And so what we are working with is to become conscious of that. To first of all recognize the wounds from our parents and others. And then as an adult, most of us listening to this call are adults to some degree or manner biologically, chronologically, or uh, metaphysically. But as we've moved into adulthood, it's there for us to look at those wounds in a new light, to look at those wounds from the deeper, broader understanding that we now have as an adult. We might recognize that our parents were just as wounded or even more wounded than we were. They were doing the best they could do. And now that we are an adult, it's for us to learn how to parent ourselves and heal those wounds. So there's going to be an evolution of parenting of ourselves and our own children. Leroy? Well, this is so perfect coming off of an entire year with Jupiter and Cancer. You know, we've all been somewhat mired in a little bit of our emotional muck if we haven't worked through some of these issues around parenting and, and the hypersensitivity of 
our inner child wounds. So it's really perfect that mm -hmm. it's set up in this way astrologically because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the key words that, that we'll be reminded of throughout the presentation tonight about Jupiter, particularly Jupiter and Leo, is enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not used to living our lives in a hyper state of enthusiasm. And, and yet that's exactly what this merging of these two archetypes is really all about. Mm -hmm. you know? And so you just to live in that state is so abnormal today that essentially it, um, you know, gets overlooked or, or seems it can seem to be a little fake, particularly if you're still hiding some of these inner child wounds, you know, the, the inner wounded child hiding underneath the tree in the playground, perhaps, or something like that, as you, you know, look inside of your own um, reconciliation with our past. Mm -hmm. But enthusiasm yeah. is where we're going to with this archetype. So it's all good news. Oh, many words like that. Enthusiasm, excitement, you know, energy. <laughs> E-words coming to mind, you know, but just that ability to find desire and joy in life again is the natural expression of Leo. We're meant to be moving outward again. We're meant to be taking Jupiter and Cancer and go forward from that self-reliance on a deep emotional level and create. And sometimes we might have to do some, again, healing of the child in order to get there. We may have our own children with lessons to learn that way. We may be adult children learning the lessons with our elderly parents in some way as well. Another key word for, you know, Jupiter type people could also be aspirations. As we get to this state of inner joy and release all these wounds, you know, Sagittarius ninth house is, is, is a lot about goal oriented behavior, you know, so what, what are we aspiring to as we're working through uh, this next year of Jupiter and Leo energy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one too. Well, but before we move on again, Jupiter and Leo is going to have us addressing karma with children, both in our individual soul cycle and soul karma and evolution and collectively and Jupiter and Leo is really about taking care of the least of us and that means all children is it any surprise that we have this immigration issue going on in the United States is it any surprise that as a plane was shot down we're so touched by the children the amount of children that were on that plane as we look at the war going on in, you know, Gaza with Israel and Palestine, is it any surprise that it's, it's the children that are getting our attention? So over this next year, you can look at all kinds of issues around children being in the news. We could even take into consideration the fact that for some of us, some parents have become so invested in their children that they've become the helicopter parents is the key phrase and they're so busy parenting they could be squishing all of the spontaneity Leo out of the child not allowing the children to be a child they could also be over parenting to such a degree that the children don't think there's any responsibility or need to grow up. They just can have it handed to them all the way throughout their life because that's what their parents have done in every possible manner from the moment they came through. So, you know, there's, there's the distortions in this arena of children that can go a variety of directions. And Jupiter can bring all those directions into excess in order for us to be objective and recognize the balance that needs to come in multiple directions with children. And so hopefully as children with parents that recognize who we are, what's unique about our soul, what our creative talents are, we grow up and become fantastic lovers and creators in the universe. 
And what we would look for with Jupiter and Leo is a maturation in love process. And if we, you know, were raised with those principles of honesty, integrity, authenticity, Jupiter and Leo could bring those situations where um, beautiful, beautiful love relationships come to pass. We could recognize that our lover is as special and unique as we are. And so then it moves into that mutual giving and receiving. When we don't have that, as we said before, if we did not have the support of the parent, if the parent could not recognize us for who we were, and we had any type of emotional arrest, that is carried forward into this process and then Jupiter and Leo is going to expose all that and so instead of trauma drama being minimized it's going to be expanded it's going to go to the extremes somebody's gonna find out somebody has a lover on them and it's just gonna trigger all of those self-love issues all of those maturation in love issues all of the conditional love issues but what we would hopefully be desiring to move towards regardless of the type of childhood we had no matter how bad it was no matter how good it was what all of us as evolving souls want to do through Jupiter and Leo is again self-love inner reflecting outer and then moving in to that whole universe of giving and receiving love from a very beautiful authentic way we'll see both extremes as we move through Jupiter and Leo over this next year Jupiter and Leo is also about finding oneself this is me this is who I am this is who I want to be this is what I want to do with my life here's the creative urges that I just sense coming out of me and finding that courage to do it to go forward to risk to strike out to try to make that effort to be all we can be as we move into being creative in the world one of the things that will happen with Jupiter and Leo is we've got to evolve any egoic sense of being underinflated or overinflated with our ego and if our ego is underinflated we have to find that ability and courage to express ourselves we've got to find the ability to go up on that stage and stand out speak out do put the shingle out with our healing modalities you know run in that race try that new dance class become the teacher of dance classes we've got to 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 again find that wherewithal to express however we feel on the deepest levels source energy wanting to express through us if we have an overinflated sense of our ego then the universe is going to ignore us the universe is not going to see us the universe could alienate us from the world stage or whatever stage until we are able to acknowledge in another what we want to have seen in ourself so Jupiter and Leo is going to have us revisiting all of our unfinished karma around creativity remember I talked about that starving artist syndrome it has to be linked with fulfilling a need in society society no longer has a need for any horse-drawn buggies and carriages unless you want to drive them around Central Park in New York but you get my point we can't just be making something because it fulfills us we have to link it to something that is productive helpful 
necessary, fulfilling to the group, the Aquarian polarity. If we have performance anxiety around creativity, karma, we have to recognize that her perfection doesn't exist here. No one is perfect. It's about making the effort, Jupiter. It's about trying and seeing where it goes and moving through that anxiety and becoming just a little more aware of some of the unique talents we have and giving them to the universe. If we have karma around that need to be noticed, again, very similar to that starving artist syndrome, but what the real key is to healing this is searching for that inner acknowledgement from universal source. In, uh, at the at EAN, Evolutionary Astrology Network, one of the things I did a long time ago in my studies is created evolutionary astrology mantras. And the mantra for Leo is, I will, my will, divine will. I will, my will, divine will. Or how would you, source, desire to express through me? How may I be a vehicle of creativity for you? And when we look for that inner acknowledgement, we don't need it outward anymore. And when we look for that inner acknowledgement from source and align ourselves with our real sense of creativity, then we're creative dynamos. Then we are those leaders in the universe. Then we are those creative juices that bring something new that just grabs the universe, you know, by the horns and the next dot com millionaire is born in some way. It doesn't have to be because we don't need it when we're looking for the inner acknowledgement, but it can come through that way. Um, Leroy, I have a kitty in the kitchen. Um, everyone, we've had construction going on in the house. My Jupiter in Leo is that I got windows, or I'm in process of getting kitchen windows. Excuse me as we get a cat in. So, Leroy, if you can come get him. Come here, Mom. Come here, kitty, kitty. Come here. Come here. Thank you for letting me call my kitty, everybody. Come on. Here. Come on. Look. Yeah. Mommy's got something for you. Yeah. 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 Oh. All right. Thank you, everyone. I had to distract the kitty in order for Leroy to get the kitty door closed. <laughs> um. And so, again, looking for that acknowledgement from the deepest levels possible is real authentic Jupiter and Leo. And then we become real authentic creative dynamos in the universe. It's not necessarily easy because, you know, we may have something that we want to do and the universe says, uh, I got a better idea and it isn't what you thought. That old Rolling Stones song, we may not always get what we want, but we always get what we need. That's Jupiter and Leo creativity when it's aligned with Source. Jupiter and Leo is also about letting go of all the masks, all the compensations, all the denials, all the false eagles, all the inauthentic parts of ourselves that really don't serve our soul anymore. I'd like to just touch upon quickly some of the distortions with Jupiter and Leo. I've been talking about them, but I'd like to just mention them for you again one more time. One of the simplest ones is, Jupiter and Leo, what about me? All of the behaviors and decisions and choices and desires that are made from a sense of ego versus the deeper soul level. The Aquarian polarity will give us the shocks, traumas, wake-up calls to bring most of us in balance in those ways. The question is, is can we hear it or are we too full of our ego? Um, looking around us on a collective level, 
All we need is leaders and authorities of countries or groups of people playing their machismo, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, playing war, and the ones that really get hurt are the innocent. And so what we can have with those types of leaders is who's bigger, who's better, who has the bolder mask, who has the bigger you know what, um, if we're speaking of males. And we see some of that going on, you know, these days. If you look around you and watch some of the international things that are going through, nationalism was started with Jupiter and Cancer. And Jupiter and Leo is either going to expand that sense of nationalism and protectionism, or we recognize the Aquarian polarity of e equality, and we're all one group of humans on planet Earth. Something else you can expect to see in the news with Jupiter and Leo over the next year is sexual scandals and excess breaking in the news somehow, some way. Not to mention religious scandals and excess breaking in the news somehow, some way. And both religious and sexual scandals can involve children, Leo. We also can have this concept of what we call the social elites. We've talked about this through Pluto and Capricorn, the 1% versus the 99%, the haves versus have-nots. With that Aquarian polarity, we can see the distortions of that coming through. Um, all you have to do is look at all of the excessive materialism that's going on in the one percents of the world and the ridiculous amounts of money paid for vehicles or um, clothing or all of those types of things that are uh, in the news from time to times with again what I just call excessive materialism way beyond any sense of fulfilling a need, let alone want or desire. Ooh, I am working off a brand new laptop. Jupiter and Leo, um, my old laptop crashed. And that's why these, uh, this two-part workshop was delayed one week. Um, got my laptop fixed, went to work on it, crashed a second time and was advised that I better replace it with a new one while I can still get all of my data off of it. And so I've up, uh, I've upgraded to uh, Windows 8.1 and I have no CD. I have an external CD, CD drive and if you don't know this, Windows 8.1 can work like a tablet and I'm realizing that if I touch my screen it moves forward with PowerPoint. I'm on a new learning curve. I love my new laptop. And we think the old one is savable. And so uh, stay tuned. But it was a little hairy last week getting everything off. I didn't lose anything, but it did create a little bit of, of work there. Um, before I move on, I've, I've went through some of my key archetypes with Jupiter, Leo, and Jupiter in Leo. There's no way I can have a totally inclusive list. So again, if there's any areas or subjects that I'm missing, you're welcome to type a question into Leroy or um, ask a, raise your hand and ask a question live if you want to. Any questions from anybody before I move on? Not on the board, Kim, but I, I had something I wanted to add here is, is under this category of distortions of Jupiter and Leo or, or probably a little bit of a surprise, you know, I, in affairs of the heart, you know, Leo energy can be so dynamic in social situations or out front there in front of the camera or, uh, but really, you, you know, having a lot of Leo in my own chart and learning about myself this lifetime with intimate relationships, many times they can be better in, in the large crowd, in the group as the Leo rather than in personal relationships. And I, I think about a famous Jupiter and Leo, Elizabeth Taylor who had all this glamour, um, this mask of 
confidence and exuded this sexuality, but actually, you know, burned through mm-hmm. about eight husbands, right? <laughs> there's this, <laughs> there's an interesting part of the Leo dynamic that's represented there by, you know, still having a vulnerability in, in, in intimate relationships and in dealing with a, uh, make it a, making a relationship work on an intimate level. Mm, good one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Leo Leroy. <laughs> Leo the King, Leroy in French, Leroy the King. Hopefully Jupiter and Leo is going to allow him to really shine. Anybody else? Questions or comments before I move on? Uh, one other came up on the board. You may uh, choose to postpone this. It looks like it could get a little mm-hmm. involved. But would would you have any time to discuss planetary pairs of Jupiter and let's say um, another planet? And we talked a little bit about Jupiter and Saturn at the beginning being the interesting planetary pair. Well, it just so happens I go through Jupiter with all the other planets tonight. Yes, I can address that. Thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Um, First of all, a few comments on Jupiter retrograde. Again, you see the dates here. Jupiter takes about... um, one year to go through a sign of the zodiac. It takes 12 years to make an entire circuit through the zodiac. So what you could do right here is where were you in the last Jupiter cycle um, 12 years ago before we go into the retrograde? I didn't make a slide up on this. Um, I thought I'd just mention it and I'm paging through my little book here because I'm looking for the last dates of Jupiter and Leo. Apologies, that kind of slipped my mind. I had the dates in my head, but I think I want to go back and be a little more exact here. Um, Jupiter went into Leo. Um, Hold on a sec. Uh, Jupiter went into Leo um, early August of 2002. So it was probably there until September of 2003. And I'll check that one out for you. Um, Jupiter went into Leo early August 2002 until late August 2003. So throughout that time period, 2002 to 2003, take a moment to reflect on the last time Jupiter was in Leo for you 12 years ago. And if you want to, you can go 12 years before that and see where Jupiter was in Leo. For Kim Marie, it was in September of 2002, Jupiter just into Leo, that Jeffrey Wolf Green asked me to run his school um, due to his declining health. And so I ran his school for six years, half of a Jupiter cycle. And I had not made that recognition, recollection and until I was starting to prep for these Jupiter materials. And so that was an, a, a big creative expansion for me, not to mention a sense of responsibility completely taking over his school and evolving it, expanding it. That's how I started my monthly classes. Um, and so you can just kind of see on, on how my own teaching skills have evolved through an entire Jupiter cycle, starting with the last time Jupiter was in Leo in 2002. Now, because Jupiter takes one year to go around the chart, as with the other outer planets, Jupiter on outward, they all have one planetary retrograde cycle a year. Jupiter is retrograde about four months of the year. Each time it goes retrograde, it retrogrades about a third of the sign, so about 10 degrees with each retrograde. As you can see from your screen here, Jupiter is going to go retrograde December 8, 2014, 22 and a half degrees Leo. It will go direct April 8th. 2015 at 12 and a half degrees Leo. Now the highlight of any planetary retrograde is either its interior conjunction as in Mercury Venus to the Sun 
or its opposition to the Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and the outer planets from Earth's orbit. So the Sun opposition to Jupiter, as you can see, is February 6, 2015. At about 17 and a half degrees, Sun Aquarius, Jupiter retrograde in Leo. Planetary retrogrades always happen when the planet is closest to Earth. And so Earth is in the middle between the Sun and Jupiter. It's always in the middle with any of the outer planetary retrogrades, and that's how that planet is closer to Earth. It's always the high point. I'll speak to this some more. Before I do, though, I've given you these dates. Before I go into um, talking about some of these Jupiter transits through Leo over the next year and some of its activity with its retrograde cycle, I want to just bring in that um, Aquarius polarity a little bit more, just a little reminder for you. When Jupiter turns retrograde in Leo, it is going to point towards its opposite sign, which is Aquarius. And Aquarius is about objectivity. And so Jupiter is going to have to be, it's, it's, it's going to be searching for objectivity in all areas of life. Remember, Jupiter's always looking for that big picture, that cosmological understanding. And so, retrograde in Leo pointing towards Aquarius, we're going to be concerned with all the big issues in our life. We're going to have to withdraw from consensus beliefs, Jupiter, and ask, what do I believe about myself? What do I believe about others that are in my life? Leo, love. What do I believe about my creativity? What do I believe about life in general? Jupiter retrograde is about finding that inner guru. But again, that Aquarian polarity is going to give us feedback from society, from the other, from our culture, from our groups. And that feedback from society, from the group. Again, triggering us inward, it's going to have us pondering and evolving that sense of ourself. Evolving our beliefs. Evolving how we are in the world. And it's going to have us really focusing on how is this burning desire to create within me useful to society. It's going to emphasize Jupiter's retrograde from December to April is going to emphasize our abilities to recognize how to serve society, how to be a part of society, how to be creative and fulfilling in society. It's also going to have us recognizing that everybody else is creative. When we have that sense of self-love, Leo, we don't feel threatened by others' creativity. We recognize it, we support it, we endorse it. We use that Jupiterian energy to help others be creative as well. And this is something that we would want to be looking towards when we have that retrograde. I didn't put this in here, but we talked about that inner wounded child. This Jupiter retrograde polarity Aquarius, this is when we can be objective about our own wounds as a child, about our parents and their wounds. That need in Leo to be noticed, to be the center of attention, Aquarius retrograde polarity, Others want the same thing, and so it's going to help us with that objectivity of recognizing we do have to love ourselves first, and then others will love us just as well. So when Jupiter's retrograde in Leo, and I'll do a class on this, you know, later on, and go into, you know more details related to whatever's happening in the world at that point when we get closer to December. But this Jupiter retrograde is going to have us balancing our self 
our own needs with the other, be it the individual, the tribe, society, culture, uh, religious group. You know, Jupiter retrograde in Leo could have us breaking free from our groups that we've been in up until this point, from our religious or spiritual groups that we've been in up until this point, and going, wait a minute, I've got to be my own inner guru. Or this group of people, this group of friends, this society isn't fulfilling my needs anymore. I've got to find myself and I've got to be true to myself. Uh, I hear I hear the I hear the the background. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you used a, a word focused on the future. I think future in one of the previous slides and wow, is this a symbol of this retrograde, this five month retrograde will really point to that focus on the future, that yeah. sign of Aquarius and all the progress that can that can be attained at that time because it's just gonna broaden out this whole viewpoint of ultimate creativity and bringing it out to the public. So, you know, you could see breakthroughs in this, you know, I got to thinking about our own um, converted gold mine up here in the Black Hills and, and all the, uh, the uh, scientific experiments going on with dark matter. And, you know, something like that could break through in the news as we, as we get this retrograde in uh, February through, uh, what'd you say, April? A four month four month retrograde. Jupiter and Saturn are four month retrogrades, and uh, December through April. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. And and you're you're right. I also see this Aquarius polarity as really bringing groups of people into the news. And are we evolving as societal groups, or are we stuck in Leonian selfishness? We could see that going on on a collective level. And if we're not moving forward, one of the things that is a very strong symbol with Aquarius is what we call trauma. And what I, how I see it through this Jupiter in Leo retrograde cycle is trauma as a wake-up call. Trauma to get our attention. Trauma to help us move forward in some way. Trauma as lightning. We uh, have had extremely hot weather today after not having much. And we have um, um, lightning and thunder starting. So I'm hoping to make it through the rest of this hour before it gets anything too bad. So thank you for um, me if I say, well, I got a lightning bolt here that's a little, well, I don't know if I want to be on my electronics. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we'll be fine. Help me energize every just a safe little bubble here until we get um, through the rest of the hour. There's more to the Aquarius polarity. I'm sure you're all having some of your own sparks. I'll try and feed more into it as we now look at some of these um, key planetary pairs with Jupiter. The first one that I want to call to your attention is is the Sun. You know, Jupiter's in the sign that the Sun rules. And I, again, when I do some of these hit lists for these planetary pairs, I can't go through all of them. We'd be here two weeks. But I try to highlight, you know, not so much what I call stressful aspects. It's just highlighting some of that energy when we're going to notice it, especially with the faster moving inner planets. So here's the sun and its annual conjunctions to Jupiter waxing square, waning square, and then in red is whenever Jupiter's retrograde. So here's that opposition to the Sun here. So it's that beginning of February when Jupiter's retrograde cycle is going to have the most impact on us personally and collectively in how we as a unique individual fit into the other. And so what happens with this planetary pair between Sun and Jupiter is it's going to stress the need for objectivity and consideration of the other. Be it our lover, be it our child, be it our parent, be it our friends, and collectively other countries, other belief systems, other groups of people. Can we find that Aquarian unity in diversity? When the sun makes these 
aspects and especially the opposition, we have to recognize the next level of self-love. We can have the trauma of being all by ourselves if we're not loving self as deeply as we can. We have to learn the next level of loving others, especially children. And through these aspects you see up here in these dates, we could easily have those good old world events as wake-up calls. You know, one of the things that I think I said this on our weekly podcast, we're at a point right now where when something happens in the rest of the world, we almost all immediately know. And so we really are moving into that global village and recognizing that what happens to the least of us happens to all of us. Leroy and I got a very heartfelt message from you know, uh, uh, someone who listens to our weekly podcast all the time from over in Tel Aviv, Israel, and she's a single mom with a child, and talking about the fear of how she's living and the day-to-day -day sirens going off and running to try and find safety in a shelter. And if you can't find the shelters, then laying in the streets and hoping that you survive any buildings being crushed next to you. It's no longer something happening over there. It's now happening to someone that we know. Um, and so we're going to continue to find those types of things. The world's going to get smaller and smaller as all of these Aquarian technologies have us recognizing things all around us quite easily. Now you see that Sun opposition to Jupiter February 6th? Well, the beginning of February, what you have here is the full moon chart for Leo, which is February 3rd of 2015. Now, when I deal with all the time zones that all of us come from, I don't, I'm not someone who says, well, I'm going to use Washington, D.C.'s chart. You may be listening from France or London. It, it does, I, I like to use zero degrees Aries charts. It gives you the planets in their signs, natural houses, and it allows you to see the configurations. What we have going on here as we get to this um, early February time period is the grand trine in fire signs. Saturn is three degrees Sag, but it's close enough. That full moon is right with Jupiter, and we have the opposition from the Sun in Leo. And so here's a real creative time for us. Here's a time where you would want to be making that effort to find your sense of self, your own independence. It just so happens that um, the month earlier, on January 12th, Pluto is going to square the nodes. You can see that still being an orb right here as we get to the winter. And on January 19th, um, the south node actually goes over Uranus at about 13 degrees um, Aries. So there's going to be a lot of activity here the end of January with the Uranus Pluto squares. I'll address that more later. And then also with Jupiter right here. But here is a very wide grand trine in the fire signs. And for those of you who know this, oh gosh, I forget what the cross quarter days are called. The one that comes um, February 1st, February 2nd, Imbolc, I-M-B-O-L-C, I'm not going to pronounce it right. It was always the time period for um, divination, divining the future for the upcoming year. This could be an excellent time for you to be where it, who am I? Who's the real me? How am I here to create in the world? Source, show me the light that I came here to shine through. Excellent time period for you to be um, discerning and intuiting how you're going to move forward create creatively with yourself and with others. I'm not going to do whole charts, everybody. Just going to accent Jupiter, okay? You can follow through with the rest of the chart however you want to. 
Now, as Jupiter makes this transit through Leo, July 2014 to August 2015, when it goes retrograde, it's going to make three aspects each. It's going to have three waning in conjuncts to Pluto and Chiron. It's going to have three waxing in conjuncts to, to Pluto and Capricorn. Three waxing in conjuncts to Chiron and Pisces. And then, of course, three waxing trines to Uranus and Aries. Now, what's unique about those in conjuncts to Pluto and Chiron is even though we're not going to have exact orbs as close as we've had with these water trines in 2013, 2014, we still are within orbs of having yawns with Jupiter, Chiron, and Pluto. September 2014, February and June 2015. And so here's the visual of this. We'll go through each of these planetary pairs individually. Here's the yawn with zero houses. And I drew this up for the fall equinox, which is September 22nd of this fall, because that's the first one. As you can see, you know, Pluto moves the slowest, and, you know, it's getting ready to just go stationary um, direct. Um, as a matter of fact, Jupiter goes direct on the fall equinox, September 22nd at 10.59. That's what the S means, stationary, direct. And so it's going to then lead the orb. So somewhere between, say, 8, 9 degrees all the way up to probably 14, 15, 16 degrees is where these three yods are going to have their configuration. So you can look and see where this is in your chart. Tomorrow night when we go through Jupiter and Leo through each of the 12 houses, we'll touch upon this in each person's chart. I'll do my best to try and bring the yod in there with Chiron and Pluto as well for everybody. But I just wanted to point out this configuration. September 2014 and the other two dates were February and June 2015. So other than the Uranus-Pluto waxing squares that we still have um, two more to go through, this is going to be the major planetary configuration for next year with the outer planets. So Chiron and Pluto are in a waxing sextile. If you go back to this slide here, Chiron to Pluto is a waxing sextile. Jupiter to Chiron is a waxing in conjunct. Chiron to Pluto is a waning in conjunct. Chiron to Pluto offers opportunity to heal or remain stuck in wounds. Jupiter in the waxing in conjunct is the courage to inwardly reflect and make the necessary changes with Chiron. Who of us does not have wounds in these patriarchal times? Jupiter's waning in conjuncts to Pluto demand the courage to stand up to any inequalities with ourself and others. It's going to ask us for individual self-responsibility, Leo to Capricorn. It's going to ask us for collective social responsibility, Leo to Capricorn. So that Jupiter and Leo really is going to push the buttons. And with this yawn, sometimes in uncomfortable ways, in how we really need to move forward versus what we want to do and moving forward versus the easy way of moving forward. In conjuncts, don't let us take the easy way out. They create that inner and outer discomfort to change. That's why I put that little quote. It takes courage to grow up and become who you truly are. And if you can't see, that's by E.E. E. Cummings. We'll talk about those specific aspects that Jupiter makes to Chiron, Pluto, and Uranus in just a little bit. First of all, let's go back and catch up with Mercury in its relationships to Jupiter. 
Um, as you can see, there's two conjunctions. Um, Mercury has one retrograde cycle where it aspects Jupiter, does it three times. It's going to be its next retrograde cycle in um, September, October of this year in Libra. That Mercury, ret oh, excuse me, it's October. Mercury's retrograde October 4th to the 25th from um, 2 Scorpio to 17 Libra. But you can see it'll be making these waxing sextiles to Jupiter. Mercury left brain, Jupiter right brain. Really going to talk about, or, or the, 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 the archetypes here. What is our ability to listen and hear what another is actually saying without getting triggered? What is the intent and meaning of what somebody's saying behind the words? Jupiter, it's the literal words. I mean, excuse me, it's opposite. Mercury, what are the literal words? Jupiter, what is the meaning behind the words? What's the concept being expressed? And so this is how. Mercury will relate to Jupiter as they go through this Jupiter and Leo cycle. Sun, Mercury, Venus, they'll all pretty much make an annual trip around the zodiac while Jupiter's in Leo. Again, I'm just trying to highlight some of the um, planetary aspects. Mercury will make an opposition to Jupiter during its retrograde, just like the Sun, and so will Venus. with Venus through Jupiter's transit. Um, it has a conjunction here coming up next month. Again, it's going to make an opposition to Jupiter during its retrograde. It's going to make a last quarter square to Jupiter. You see those um, dates and degrees in red. So to have Sun, Mercury, Venus all oppose Jupiter retrograde in Leo you know, this is really going to be getting our attention personally and collectively. Me versus you. Me versus us. Them versus us. Us versus them. It, it's just going to be all over the place. And so because, they're, because so much of this is going to happen in fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, Aquarius, well, Scorpio, Aquarius. We have to really be careful about um, triggering that fixed energy and getting stuck in places. You know, getting stuck and it's all about me and I can't have anything to do with you. I can't see where you're coming from. And, and if so, we'll get the Aquarian triggers because that's what we need to do. And that will then work collectively. The other thing that's going to come into the picture with Venus is love. Conditional love versus unconditional love. Insecure Leo, Jupiter and Leo, all the I will love you ifs. You know, all the attention getters, all the trauma dramas to get you to notice me. And Jupiter and Leo is going to have to be careful with that because these outer planets in Aquarius could, could just decide to go, well, enough of you. Goodbye. I am out of here. And Aquarius turns that cold shoulder and disappears. And Leo is left in, you know, a puddle of tears. So objectivity, objectivity, objectivity. If it, if, if, if there's trauma drama in my world, what is it there to teach me? How deeply can I love myself to then understand that I can unconditionally love others. I can choose to love others regardless with healthy boundaries. I, because of the patriarchal distortions and all of the masochism and victimization there is, I don't look at love as selfless. I look at love as full of healthy self. It's neither selfish nor selfless. Healthy love has healthy boundaries. I know when someone's crossing a boundary and abusing me physically, emotionally, psychologically. I can say no. I can walk away. 
but I can choose to love with healthy boundaries. It may not be how they want to be loved. And that may be how someone chooses to love us. And it may not be what we like, but it may be what we need to help us reach to those deeper levels of inner love. Mars, the Mars with Jupiter and Leo. You know, as I was kind of intuiting this one, Jupiter's going to go from a first quarter square in Scorpio. It's going to have the opposition with Jupiter, just like the three inner planets. Here it is, emphasizing this Leo Aquarius polarity again. And then Jupiter's going to end, or Mars is going to end Jupiter's in Leo's year with a last quarter square in next spring. Um, what I was intuiting here is social extremes. You know, wanting to be recognized. And either we recognize everybody wants to, you know, be noticed, everybody wants to be understood, everybody wants all their Martian desires to come about. And so we can heal and honor that in everybody or we go to extremes with Mars and Jupiter you know pulling the two ends of the string until it busts. Mars and Jupiter can really get caught up in energy. Mars naturally rules Aries fire sign. Jupiter naturally rules Sagittarius fire sign. So as a planetary pair they can get quite excitable. Good or bad, healthy or distorted. So we've got to be looking for objectivity with our desired nature, with what we really are desiring. Some of the distortions is we're going to get into that Leonian pride and elitism. We can get into racism. You can find all of those distortions with the Aquarius Leo polarity. They deal with the social classes. There's a reason why we looked at Leo in the old days as royalty, the king and queens. And opposite that was the Aquarian court with all of its elitism. We can be full of that going on, not from the perspective of monarchies. Today it will come from this perspective of dollar signs and resources and money. In a more positive note, the Mars-Jupiter uh, pair, we find courage. We explode with creativity. And when we realize we're all in it together, we can be a voice of equality. So Mars will come in and emphasize this as well as, again, Sun, Mercury, and Venus. And so... Um, with the sun, I'm looking, I'm going to see if I can get these dates for you really close. The sun opposition is February 6th. The um, Mercury opposition is March 1st. The Venus opposition is January 19th. So it's going to go Venus, Sun, Mercury, Mars. Venus, Sun, Mercury, Mars. That's the order in which the inner planets are going to be in Aquarius and oppose Jupiter and Leo. Mars following the last, you know, again, this could be the combustion that makes things come out, both of a positive and negative nature with world events, even for us personally. Now, as we spoke earlier, Jupiter and Leo are a pretty unique planetary, Jupiter and Saturn are a pretty unique planetary pair because Jupiter's growth and expansion, Saturn is decay and decline. Their relationship over the next year, I expanded it beyond a year. They will have one last quarter square while Jupiter is still in Leo. And then Jupiter is going to move into Virgo as Saturn moves into Sag. And with each of their retrogrades, there will be two more last quarter squares. So last quarter squares are what's no longer working in society or in our world. And Jupiter and Saturn are the social conscious planets. 
They help, that's, they're the bridges between our personal inner planets and our outer unconscious planets. So they are society. Jupiter Saturn has a 20 year cycle of growth and decay. And we are in the latter half going to the three quarter mark of this 20 year cycle. I see this as impetus for social uprisings or we could fall into despondency especially when the last two squares happen in Virgo and Sag. We could feel victimized. We could feel that nothing's going to change. So hopefully we can take that August 2015 last quarter square between these two and stand up for what we want to change in the world and keep that momentum going through the last two squares in mutable signs and take it into, you know, deeper philosophies, deeper social understandings of fairness and equality for all. Now our individual relationships with this aspect are going to need to find deeper meanings so that each party can express creativity. Each party can feel creative and they can renew the relationship and the love in the relationship. Last quarter squares, that 270 degree mark, you know, this initiates search deeper and deeper searches for universal source, the absolute universal timeless truths. And so there's going to be some big reckon, reckon there's going to be some big realizations with Jupiter Leo of what's really no longer working on a societal level and that's going to come along in specific ways for any society or culture and it will then also come about on global ways in some manner you know stay tuned we shall see what happens it could be possible with Jupiter and Saturn as conscious enough triggers to to create the social movements we're looking for in the world somehow some way with Chiron again remember that I said Jupiter is going to have those three waxing in conjuncts the 150 degree aspect this is inner crisis to affect change and I think what some of these inner crises are going to be is a deep need to really be looking for that self-love that we must find through Jupiter and Leo in order to to evolve in order to grow in order to find the courage to be all we can be it's also going to require us to have some self responsibility for our life situations. Chiron in Pisces, we're not victims. Chiron is helping us become conscious of woundedness in that sense from this life and past lives and do something about it. Chiron doesn't want to stay stuck in the wound, Chiron wants to move through it and heal it. You know, Chiron has a general rulership of all of the non-traditional um, healing therapies. And so as I look at this waxing in conjunct, it can bring some crises in recognizing that some of our traditional methods aren't quite working. And it's opening the door for alternative methods. And so there can these aspects, believe it or not, I think can be many people recognizing alternative healing tools. And then next year when Chiron goes into Virgo or Jupiter goes into Virgo, I think it has three oppositions to Chiron too. Jupiter only has one waxing in conjunct to Neptune, one opposition to Neptune. But it's gonna go three times with Chiron, which means we can be more conscious because Chiron is that bridge between Saturn and Uranus, between what's conscious and unconscious. So look at this one and pay attention to this for all of you 
who are you know in the alternative world in the healing modalities and are wanting to move forward in those modalities how is Jupiter and Leo asking each of you personally to be responsible in that way and to find your courage to express yourself and move forward in that way from a general perspective um, letting go of patriarchy and returning to m including matriarchal principles balancing the two bringing back natural spiritual laws and principles nature is the healer and so in a broad perspective all of us need to step up in our responsibilities with our alternative healing tools this yod may or may not have us doing that work full time Pluto and Cap, but it is going to be showing us the ways that we need to change to work with those opportunities as much as possible. It may have us bridging traditional and alternative in some way. Now, um, one of the, oops, I got one more planet, then I got another chart for you. Jupiter Leo or Jupiter Uranus. Remember the waxing trines? There's three waxing trines, 120 degrees. This is where I do we really get the party. I mean, this is this is the exciting aspect for Jupiter and Leo. Oh my god, a trine with Uranus. Uranus rules Aquarius air sign, but it opposes Jupiter and Leo. So, you know, there's 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 objectivity, there's wake-up calls, there's insights that can come through but they're coming through with the waxing trine. So things that we have been putting into effort with Jupiter and Uranus and understanding the bigger picture and really liberating our soul and being who we can be, that's the party, that's the joy, that's the excitement, that's the moving forward, that's the energy that's coming along to support us. I put that word creative explosions in here and then ju just a couple of key words. Definitely technology. I cannot believe the changes in my little laptop. I don't even need my mouse anymore. But I'm in my transition phase so I'm going both ways and learning to touch my screen and let the mouse go. And now I have a laptop that flips over and works like a tablet. I'm going to need classes. <laughs> Jupiter and Leo. <laughs> So the technological expansions are just going to come all over the place. Can we keep up with them? Well, it'll keep all those dendrites in our brain working. There can be collective war. We can see explosions in music and art. We could see some real weather stuff going on next year. There could be a, we think we've got dry places on planet Earth now. Wait till we see this Jupiter Uranus trines in Leo and Aries. We could real, really see some possibility of major, major fires again. And uh, Mr. Leroy, you got some comments? <laughs> I was just going to say you might not have to read the manual on your on your new computer because this combination can give you that sudden revelation. You're already discovering as you're moving along. You won't have to. You don't have to take any classes. <laughs> It okay, just gonna, <laughs> you'll have the, in, the intuitive leaps. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I got too much Jupiter in my chart. I love being a student. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, that's okay. I think I'm kind of sparking, you know. It's been pretty heavy with this Cardinal Grand Cross. And so, you know, Jupiter and Leo is almost like that little breather and permission to go, oh, can I just relax a little bit? Can I just have a little fun? You know, maybe it's just because we've been working our, our, our bunsies off here um, on the cliff that I'm really sensing that from these two planets. But I think, you know, generically it's that way. Now, if you've been the couch potato, as I call it, with the trines, if you haven't been making that effort to evolve and understand yourself better and grow and liberate your soul with Uranus and Aries, you could find yourself being passed by with the universe. It could look like everybody else is having all the excitement and, and parties and you're sitting on the sidelines. 
then you need to pay attention to those intuitive hits and sparks. I mean, it's you won't find a smoother aspect for answers if you're willing to ask the questions and follow through. And as I said in this last thing right here, we'll have intellectual breakthroughs or brainwashes. And of course, if we're looking in that consensus world, we literally could have some of those, you know, brainwashes coming through. Luckily, we do have all of these technological capacities that allows us to just be so in touch. I mean, the Pluto and Capricorn big brother is just losing ground every single moment as we recognize collectively how socially connected we are. Um, expect the whole spying thing to continue to be in the news with these two and that balance between individual privacy versus right to know, need to know, what do we want to know. Um, but I, I mean, I just see these these two as I mean, just look at a look at how fire races across a dry landscape. If I'm, I mean, when <laughs> Washington State's kind of the last area I expect to see um, wildfires right now. But look at how it's expect that unexpected. But again, I don't necessarily see all of this aspect as being quote unquote distorted. Um, I see that there's a lot of potential for evolution to come through with this aspect. And so how can you be a part of creatively helping that be real? And so here was the other chart that I wanted to point out to you when Uranus goes retrograde um, December 8th. Um, this is where we have the grand trine with the Sun and in this case Mercury and we can bleed Venus into that in Sag. We have the tightness of the south node Uranus conjunction. Have to watch the Retraumatization of ourself, traumatization of children, Aries. Jupiter's here in Leo, just getting ready. This S is retrograde. You have to be paying attention because they don't put SD or SR here, but you can look and then know that it's one way. And of course, here's the planets in Sag. So here's that grand trine in fire signs. So we'll have some excitability going on here as well. Pluto's very still close within its orb uh, coming up in January. So this would be another time period in early December when we could expect some things coming along and happening in the news. Moving along, again, as I said, with Jupiter Neptune, there's only one aspect, and it's coming along next month the waxing in conjunct or quincunx, as this abbreviation is. So, because there is just that one aspect, you've got to pay attention to inner messages about the evolution of our personal beliefs on the deepest levels possible. Are we a victim or a co-creator with source energy? Are you projecting everything out there onto an outer guru for disappointment or are you recognizing your own inner guru direct connection to source energy? We can talk about this aspect on our weekly podcast if you want to pay attention over the next month. I'm trying to be conscious of time for you. My last planetary pair is Jupiter with Pluto. As we said earlier, it's the waning in conjuncts, the 210 degree or outer adjustments that come from others and society. So again, who is in your face? What is in your face about the limitations of your reality, about the limitations of your desires? And what adjustments are you having to make with your creativity? in order for it to be accepted by society, in order for it to be recognized and fulfill a role in society. I take you back again to the Yod with Jupiter Chiron 
or I said that I think it's possible with these three yards over the next year that there could be some breakthroughs in alternative healing modalities. How are you going to be riding that way? How are you going to be a bridge? This is where you can't just do everything you want to do. You've got the visions with Jupiter Chiron. With Jupiter Pluto, you have got to work within the structures of society, yes, pushing it to its limits, but it's pushing you to your limits and saying, you know, you've got to have your little certification or piece of paper, Pluto and Capricorn. There's something about your creativity that has to be addressed in such a way that society can recognize it. And so, one last thing that I want to cover in the next few minutes, and I thank everybody who listens on an international level for allowing me to talk from my perspective, and that is from the perspective of the United States and our chart. I use the Gemini Rising chart, which is the 2.13 a.m. chart for the United States. So here we are set up for Washington, D.C. On August 14th, next month, the uh, Jupiter will cross over the north node of the U.S. moon. And so you can expect us on a consensus level to have something going on and some nationalistic perspective that we've got to be leaders somehow. Hopefully we're going to have a clear uh, consensus collective voice with the North Node in the third house there. But the other thing going on this next year is through Jupiter's retrograde cycle. I just put Jupiter here as a symbol. It has three waning sextiles to Saturn in Libra fifth house in the Gemini chart, children, and how we are going to address Jupiter and Leo working with all of the children and immigrants that are coming in. It's going to naturally put our own children who are badly neglected in the news. We're going to have three oppositions of Jupiter to the moon in Aquarius. Now if you use the Sibley chart, the Sagittarius rising, Moon in Aquarius is a few degrees different, but Jupiter is still going to have its oppositions to this. And the Moon is always the public in a mundane chart. And where is the collective? And we've got a fourth, tenth house axis here. So are we going to mother or father the children? Are we going to nurture the children or be authoritarian to the children? Are we going to nurture or be authoritarian to the public in general? So Jupiter is going to bring about some expansion of awareness and recognition on a public level. The, there's going to be public opinions changing in the United States throughout this Jupiter retrograde. And the big question is, are we, beginning, are we going to become more Leonian selfish? Or are we going to move more towards that self-centeredness that includes everybody? Stay tuned. We'll find out. Um, Jupiter makes three waxing trines to the U.S. Chiron in Aries. And as you can see, South Node, transiting South Node is going to be going over that. Um, Uranus is getting closer and closer to that. Those waxing trines, again, you're going to be looking for you know, innovation coming through. Um, I think in some ways that Chiron in Aries, you know, 11th house on a collective level, that's that strike out for independence, that's that need to be the leader, the need to be best, the need to be noticed, you know, there's all our elitism and how much woundedness it causes to so many, to the rest of us. Um, Jupiter and Leo again is going to be raising that picture and what we've got to be careful of is falling into deeper inequalities and deeper selfishness and elitism. The opposite of that with that Jupiter, Leo in the fourth is recognizing again, I, I just, boy, 
this immigration issue is not going to go away, everybody. Um, it, 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 I saw the, I saw such an interesting cartoon today. Um, the GOP in the United States, which is the Republicans, they had the symbol of the Republican with America sign, only they left off the A, so it's America, and they're holding up their hands telling um, Jose, um, Marion, and this little child you call Jesus, uh, there's no room here. And I just thought, oh, that's so ironic for... Uh, are some of our attitudes on children right now um, <laughs> and I think some of you know you know we're the I'm a white European I, I'm the immigrant here um, we're also going to have Jupiter making um, waxing trines to Mars in Gemini I see kids in this one well I see again we're either we can have confusion or what we have happening in the US is this um, deadlock about how we're going to go forward um, as a nation in our desires collectively, uh, politically, you know, um, there could also be that whole confusion about what's right, what's healthy, how we have this tendency to just pick and choose any subject and seeing it from one perspective when we can be so hypocritical to any of the other expect perspectives going on. So for your um, PDF file afterwards I have included the dates. Uh, red is in retrograde of all of these hits that Jupiter will be making to the US chart. It is the oppositions to the moon that are going to be the most impactful. So October 14th, February 2nd, and June 11th, you might pay attention to those dates and see what's breaking in the news on social collective levels for the U.S. Um, what happens when Jupiter, you know, Saturn's it got this natural square too, Sun in Cancer, Jupiter in Cancer. And so there's a lot of hypocrisy that can go on here in who we include and who we exclude and arguments not making any sense in that consensus world. Um, finally, it's about not neglecting the Uranus-Pluto squares. These are not the squares. This is how Uranus is impacting the Grand Cross to this Gemini chart. Pluto is opposing the Sun and squaring Saturn and those first quarter squares to Saturn come next year. They're going to have a strong impact on this Jupiter and Leo picture. Uranus over these next two years, 2014-15, is squaring the Sun opposing Saturn. So here's your pictures for you in this same chart. Here's the Pluto oppositions to the Sun, first quarter squares to Saturn, Uranus opposing Saturn, and having the last quarter squares to the Sun. So it's really Uranus-Pluto to Saturn that we're going to be seeing in 2015 right here. You see this right there? Again, Saturn oppos or Uranus oppositions to Saturn, first quarter squares to Pluto. I think that that's going to have some impacts in how we're going to choose to um, operate uh, on a, you know, with our authority figures, with taking care of children, you know, and Jupiter's down here in Leo sensitizing those issues from the fourth house and emotionally as well as it makes this opposition. So look for collective opinions to change in the United States and it might be some real harsh stuff going on to get us to make those changes. One of them was just breaking in the news today about the um, heavy-handedness of um, emergency responders to a black man on the streets of New York City and it was captured on personal video and claiming his innocence and that he hadn't done anything and they wrestled him to the ground 
knocked him unconscious, nobody gave him any um, CPR or help, and he died. And so here's those masses in the streets on inequality issues. And there's a lot of these issues may be starting off as racist from this grand cross in cardinal signs, um, sexuality issues, minority issues, racist issues, and they're going to, I think they will keep evolving as Pluto and Capricorn gets closer and closer to natal Pluto in the U.S. between now and 2022. The issues will start with one group and they're going to broaden into being collective social issues basically between haves and have-nots, between the elites and the masses. Stay tuned. One more time, here's our Astral Library for any of these sections. If you're new to EAN and you'd like to dip your toes into some different materials, Come back tomorrow night, we'll do Jupiter and Leo, and exactly one week from tonight, we'll look at the Uranus retrograde cycle in Aries. All right, I think I ran a little over, not too bad. Any comments or questions from anybody? We'll have more time tomorrow night, because I won't review these materials, and we will spend the two hours just with the Jupiter transit in Leo through all the 12 houses. I'll have a little more time for uh, questions, but is there a burning question on any material I didn't cover to this point? As I set you up, that we'll have more time tomorrow. <laughs> You're clear, Kim. Good job. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'll see you back here uh, in 22 hours tomorrow night for Jupiter and Leo transiting through the 12 houses. Thank you very much.